if they want to rise and start revolution within North Korea, they are not going to rise against the leader that U.S. is uh, backing up. Trump can be innocent or it can be very ignorant. Kim Jong-un, North Korean regime is so logical. They are not here to ever go away. And because I knew that Trump was actually not going to get denuclearization from North Korea. And I was so right. Oh my god, Trump, you cannot say that you're competing <laughs> Kim Jong-un's like, love with Obama. Hi everyone! Welcome to my channel. My name is Yeonmi Park. I am a North Korean human rights activist. Now I live in Chicago and soon in a few months I'm going to be a citizen of America so I will become your fellow American someday soon. So today in this video I am going to react to the last night's presidential debate between Trump and Biden and especially the part when they were discussing over about Kim Jong-un and North Korea. This is my specialty and please know that it is not about my whole impression of the debate and or any other issue. It is just like really purely focusing on North Korea issue. And all I'm saying is that it is not me trying to influence you to how to vote or anything because I mean, honestly, America is important for Americans. I think we need to select a leader that does good to the world and also does the good to Americans. And I completely get that. And how they do that is by solving North Korean problem, the American president can actually make even American people's lives better because North Korea is actually the really threat to US security and to American lives. And we don't know how much is affecting, but with the increasing of cyber attacks and everything, North Korea threat is gonna go only get bigger and bigger. So it is also crucial for our country's sake, American sake, and the rest of the world too, you know. North Korea is not only a threat to America or the South Korea, Japan, it is a truly the threat to whole humanity. So I hope you know you can see why I am only analyzing North Korea in this video and I will talk about both pros and cons and the things that I disagree with them and all I'm saying is giving you the heads up I'm not agreeing with 100% what Trump said or 100% what or like disagree with what 100% he said the same thing with Biden I'm not here to support Biden or disagree with everything that he says it is just really pure my reaction and what I think, what they have done and what they are going to do. So let's go in. Get off the subject of China. Let's talk around, sitting around the table. All right. Come on, Joe, you can do better. We're going to talk about North Korea now. President Trump, you've met with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un three times. You've talked about your beautiful letters with him. You've touted the fact that there hasn't been a war or a long-range missile test. And yet North Korea recently rolled out its biggest ever intercontinental ballistic missile and continues to develop its nuclear arsenal. Do you see that as a betrayal of the relationship you no. forged? Just 30 seconds here because we need to get on to the next So segment. when I met with Barack Obama, we sat in the White House. Right at the beginning, had a great conversation. It was supposed to be 15 minutes, and it was well over an hour. He said, the biggest problem we have with North is North Korea. I can't just believe Obama said that to Trump. Like, if North Korea is the biggest problem that America was facing, why weren't you doing nothing during your eight years presidency? Like, eight years is a long time, seriously, to be a president and sitting in that higher position. If North Korea is that kind of threat, why are you telling Trump now? You should just have done something before you're leaving office. It is so unthinkable how, I mean, in a way that we just, you know, like Trump, like Obama had this position called like strategic patience during his administration, which means strategically doing nothing. Whatever happens in North Korea, just doing nothing. That's, that was like Obama's approach. He did not even sit down with any one North Korean defector. Unlike the Bush, Bush sat down with a lot of defectors and he genuinely, genuinely cared about 
political, you know, distance in North Korea, the religious freedom, civil rights. He really cared about those things. Again, I'm not talking about Bush's Iraq. What the things that mistakes that me he made. I'm just talking only about North Korea. And Obama just somehow, you know, just pretending North Korea didn't exist, that we didn't exist. He knew that North Korean people were like slaves in China being sold. And he talked about slavery in America, but of course, didn't talk about any slavery that happened in current moment. He indicated we will be in a war with North Korea. Guess what? It would be a nuclear war. And he does have plenty of nuclear capability. In the meantime, I have a very good relationship with him. So again, Obama was wrong. Like North Korea is never, never, ever going to start a nuclear war or any kind of war unless they are being under military physical attack. Unless North Korea believes that they are going to be disappeared, they are going to be completely dismantled as a regime, they might start the wars as a revenge, last gift to the world, like, oh, I'm going to just blow up her thing as I'm dying, who cares? That can happen, but if, if nobody attacks them first, militarily, North Korea will never, never, ever going to start a war. Because North Korea regime, the reason they are having these nuclear weapons is protecting Kim Jong-un, is protecting the dictatorship. It's not about like conquering other countries, or it's not about defeating enemies and keeping North Koreans safe. This, new, this nuclear weapon is a, like a, a strategy for them to keep it, so they can keep negotiating with other countries. And no matter what kind of crimes they commit against humanity, because they are nuclear weapon the dictatorship, nobody can touch them. And that is why they are having these weapons, not because they want to start a nuclear war against the world. So it was so not like right what Obama thought or what even, it, I hope just that's not what anyone thinks, but if that's what he thought, that was completely wrong. Different kind of a guy, but he probably thinks the same thing about me. We have a different kind of a relationship. We have a very good relationship and there's no war. And you know, about oh, two months ago... Oh my gosh, I'm gonna get into detail like why it's not a good thing to have a good relationship with the dictator, but this is so disappointing. Like Trump is talking about his bragging about good relationship that he has uh, with the, the most monster dictator. But other than like not having a war, of course. Like, yeah, it is true after Trump's first year, that after the, those summits, North Korea stopped showing like open like on the surface start the test that doesn't mean they have stopped developing these higher capability nuclear weapons they have been and that's why like tr trump you cannot just like pretend north korea is not a threat anymore you haven't eliminated the problem the problem is that slightly became less visible and less like obvious but the problem is getting bigger on the under the surface and and that is might even be more scary. Like this time, during the parade, North Korea came out with this gigantic, more like monstrous weapon. So this is crazy that we have a peace with North Korea right now. He broke into a certain area. They said, oh, there's going to be trouble. I said, no, they're not, because he's not going to do that. And I was right. Look, instead of being in a war where millions of people, Seoul, you know, is 25 miles away, millions and millions, 32 million people in Seoul, Millions of people would be okay. dead right now. President we Trump. Don't like, who is standing the war? I'm like, I'm so confused. Like, unless US or South Korea, Japan doesn't attack North Korea, North Korea is never going to start in a war. So, Trump cannot, like, be using force prediction to, like, you know, pretend that he was somehow guardian of the peace and he brought us some kind of. He saved us going into nuclear war and the people who's gonna die if it happened, but that's that was never going to happen. And it wasn't like because Trump did something right that there's no nuclear war with North Korea. Because Trump is also doing nothing about North Korea, there is no war and dictators keep getting stronger and stronger and our threat is getting bigger and bigger in this world. So the idea is that, that we have a peaceful relationship with North Korea right now is really misinforming and misleading to the people because the, the peace that we are having with Kim Jong-un is not a permanent peace. 
Therefore, Trump cannot really tell us that. You know, Obama, in a way, yeah, there was no nuclear war during Obama or even before. What does that mean? That is this leading to the permanent peace in Korean Peninsula and the world? No, it's not. Kim Jong is keep preparing it, and Trump cannot say that. That you know, he the fact that he has a good relationship with Kim Jong Un, and that is something good for North Korean people or the world. It doesn't matter what a love letter Kim Jong Un writes to Trump. Kim Jong Un doesn't treat people in North Korea right. That's why this problem is not just automatically go away because he's receiving his love letters with Kim Jong Un. Some people do argue that oh, this is a strategy that Trump is showing inside. He despises Kim Jong Un, but you know he's almost like uh, trying to rule the baby with you know like lollipop. Keep just telling Kim Jong Un that you are my good friend and trying to give him a trust. And then like Kim Jong Un is going to be off guarded and trying to buy Trump's deal over North Korea and get rid of the nukes. But the, that is showing how. Very nice way to put it. Trump can be innocent, or it can be very ignorant. Kim Jong Un, North Korean regime is so logical. They are not here to ever go away with their dictatorship. Their every intention is maintaining their power. It's not about fighting for North Korean people or keeping the world peaceful place. And. The the time that Kim Jong Un is earning from Trump pres presidency, like he earned from Obama administration, is only benefiting whom? The North Korean regime. It's only benefiting North Korean regime to survive longer and coming up with better technology to destroy the world. Biden, to you, North Korea conducted four nuclear tests under the Obama administration. Why do you think you would be able to rein in this persistent threat? Right because now? I'd make it clear. I cannot be more satisfied about this question to Joe Biden because it's so satisfying. Like Biden was criticizing about Trump's, you know, handling of North Korea as if something that he's gonna he has done something better. I mean, it was actually worse. Obama and Biden didn't actually ever even talk about North Korean human rights issue or did anything about it. They did never even sat down with any North Koreans in their lifetime. And Biden is just like, you know, I mean, he had every chance to do something right and something differently. He was in the office for like eight years before Trump, and North Korea was already Biden on such a huge ish. And now he he's saying like, oh, I'm gonna do something different. I mean, let's see. We were making clear to China they had to be part of the deal because here's the re I made it clear and as a spokesperson. I really hope this piece came out from Trump's mouth this time. This used to be Trump's talking points. He didn't. He acknowledged that China is a bigger part of the problem, of North Korean problem. Like they are the like main. Responsible party for this whole seventy-five years of you know oppression, and and I was so glad when Chi I mean when Trump came in early like two thousand sixteen, he was talking about how Xi Jinping was sponsoring Kim Jong Un and all of that actual truth, and now I mean somehow just Trump dropped that point, and he just keep talking about what kind of love letters. That he's receiving from Kim Jong Un, and suddenly this very crucial point just, you know, Biden took it over. He's opportunist. He's a politician like everybody else. He he knows that this is a、uh, something that Trump is not doing anymore. So he's going to take the credit to talk about China's responsibility over North Korea's problem. From the administration, when I went to China, that they said, "Why are you moving your missile defense up so close? Why are you?" Moving more forces here. Why are you continue to do uh,、um, uh, military maneuvers with South Korea? I said because North Korea is a problem, and we're going to continue to do it so we can control them. We're going to make sure we can control them and make sure they cannot hurt us. I mean, like, if you knew, if you know North Korea is a problem, why didn't you do anything during the eight years? Seriously, why didn't you do it? Anything? It's so upsetting. Like. If you knew it was a problem, you had every information in your, in your hand as a like vice president. You should definitely have done something. 
I mean, it's just almost like so. I mean, what do I say? Like politicians will say anything to get reelected, like or elected. It's just so sickening to see that they are pretending they care about something. They pretend that it, you know, they genuinely care, and of course they don't care. They're just gonna say anything that is benefiting their election, and it just come across all politicians. It is crucial that for us to give them the benefit of that, but also it is crucial for us to hold our guards up so we can check in on them. Are you actually doing this? Because at the end of the day, people are the ones who actually care, and the people are the ones who pay the price. Therefore, we just really have to watch out. And I, at this point, it's, I mean, a lot of things that are from the politician's mouth to me just all BS. And, you know, you do like sell your country if that benefits you or something, some private, you know, reason. And that's, that's sadly the bitter, sweet, you know, truth that I've been learning, observing US politics and in recent years, for sure. Sure, they cannot hurt us. And so if you want to do something about it, step up and help. If not, it's going to continue. What has he done? He's legitimized North Korea. He's talked about his good buddy who's... Yep, I cannot disagree with Biden on this. Um, I know, <laughs> guys. So I just want to go back again. Like, Not everything Trump did is bad, but not everything Trump did is good either. I think it's... It's the same thing with Biden. It's not everything Biden did is good or, or bad. You know, things are not that like black and, you know, white. There are some things that Trump did wrong and which was giving a legitimacy to Kim Jong-un. When Trump had that uh, summit with Kim Jong-un a few years ago in Hanoi and Singapore, I was one of the biggest critics of that. And because I knew that Trump was actually not going to get denuclearization from North Korea. And I was so right. Look at it this year at the military parade. North Korea showcased this new monstrous nuclear weapon to the world. And these guys are not trying to get denuclearized. They're just trying to, you know, like compliment Trump and getting a lot of photo ops to legitimize this young dictator to North Korean people. And also hoping removing some sanctions that is that hurting the regimes the revenue stream and maybe also getting some help but trump went in there like hoping so i like so ignorantly went in there and gave every piece that kim jong wanted which is main thing is american president the leader of this free world is behind you like do you like this is such a huge thing psychologically for north korean elites especially if they want to rise and start a revolution within North Korea, they are not going to rise against the leader that U.S. is uh, backing up. This is like this is unbelievable way that Trump, you know, didn't expect how these things did, that he messed the whole this thing up. North Korean regime was taking every footage of that summit and keep working broadcasting to people look at it american president is praising me like literally kim jong-un went there praising kim jong like he's a tough guy he loves his people and that's all north korean regime has been proving right they keep saying i love you my people i love you, my people and now people was starting question like do you actually love us then why are we starving and trump goes in there and is like oh you leader loves you guys and even though in Trump's mind, innocently he thought, oh, okay, that's maybe nice things to say to somebody. But he cannot forget, this is not somebody he's meeting. He's a meeting of the master of 25 million slaves, human slaves, in this 21st century. He's sitting with a Hitler and then he's praising them. How this is like possible, right? I think that was something so Trump got screwed up and I can't even like think otherwise. Like he did something so wrong in that meeting and like now we don't have any any tangible result from it. Yeah, I mean he keeps saying that Trump keeps saying like, oh there's no more nuclear test. But that's not the problem. They're keep building it within North Korea inside. And he's not stopping that. 
then what is the outcome of the summit? Like nothing. We got lots of pretty photos as Trump would food. His good buddy who's a thug, a thug, and he talks about how we're better off. And they are, have much more capable missiles, able to reach U.S. territory much more easily than ever did before. Let me follow up with you. So, right, yeah, he was a thug. He was a dictator. He was a mafia. He was a gangster. He was a murderer. And Trump should never have go. He, of course, didn't have to go say, that, like, you know, F you, dictator. He could not have done that. I don't expect him to do that. Like, it's a world stage diplomacy. You gotta do something. But he didn't have to go out of his track to praise Kim Jong un, right? Like, there's a whole difference about it. Like, you go being uncivilized, that is a whole different story. But there is a, somewhere in that civility level, Trump could keep the. If he really thought at the time, people can make a misjudgment. It's okay. Anyone can make mistakes. So I'm okay that Trump that made a mistake. But if he can own up to it, that's like my problem. If he acknowledge that that is uh, his mistake, that he's gonna do something differently. Like I think that's something so incredible about a human. They, when they acknowledge their mistakes. But in politics, as soon as you acknowledge your mistake, you get just crushed by your opposition. And I also understand why just Trump is holding up his ground. Or maybe he's just really crazy inside his head that think Kim Jong-un is an amazing leader for North Korean people. And he, you know, Kim Jong-un loves Trump and praises him like that. And he, Kim Jong-un has really every intention to you know, make nursing people's lives better. If he really believes that, that's like insane. But if he just really worried about being crushed to acknowledging their mistake, then it's also our responsibility to create a culture where it's okay for politicians to acknowledge their mistakes. Because they're human beings. Like we make mistakes all the day, all the time. We should not hold against somebody that they made a mistake as long as they they learn their lessons. We should be like aiming for a society that is more like con like forgiving than like condemning every single thing and never let let it go and never like moving move on. It's such a problem once we do that. Like there's no end to that 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 toxic cycle. And I do like give a lot of credit to Biden during this debate that he. <laughs> I mean, honestly, store all the talking points that Trump brought up in the beginning of his campaign and the presidency when he delivered that, you know, speech at the UN calling Kim Jong Rakim man and calling out China. That was basically all Trump's talking points, and now it's being repeated in Biden mouth, and that's why it feels so severe. Like this is unbelievably severe. The role just got reversed. Vice President Biden, you've said you wouldn't meet with Kim Jong-un without preconditions. Are there any conditions under which you would meet with him? On the condition that he would agree that he would be drawing down his nuclear capacity to get that the Korean Peninsula should be nuclear-free zone. All right, let's move on to... So seriously, there's no talk of human rights? <laughs> it is laughable. Like, what can be more valuable than human life? They are like people like us, 25 millions in that hermit kingdom, in that country of entire concentration camp. And not even one single word coming out about human rights. The only thing U.S. wants, the U.S. government is not about seeing the human life getting improved, but removing the nuclear weapons. So as long as North Korea removes nukes, then the U.S. is like what they're saying is, oh, whatever you do internally, if you fry your people, if you cut off your people, whatever you do inside, oh, it's not our problem because you just remove the nukes because nukes is not serving any our interest. <sighs> so disheartening. Like, of course, I don't support nukes. It is a problem, but it's as much as nukes is a problem, the human rights abuses happening in North Korea is also a huge problem. And if you don't talk about it, how North Korean regime going to behave? They have to. They have the responsibility as the leader of this like world that need to show the example what the humanity need to strive for. That what we are striving for is that we respect the human rights. 
Like it's okay for us talking about animals' rights, but apparently, you know, the talking about human rights is not even part of their if daily routine in their like the most important presidential debate. All right, let's move on to American families. Kristen, they tried Very to quickly, meet with 10 him. Seconds, they tried to meet with him. He I wouldn't didn't. do it. He didn't like Obama. He didn't like him. He oh my God, Trump! You cannot say that you're competing <laughs> Kim Jong Un's like love with Obama. Seriously, oh Trump! I mean, like it is. Yeah, I thank God. Like you should, your aiming should not be like being liked by dictator. Your sh aiming should be you do something so destructive to the dictatorship that you get despised by dictator. Like the fact when I get so much attack from Kim Jong Un's regime, like that's when I know like oh I'm being so effective that I'm hurting dictator. The fact that dictator loves you is not a sign that is positive. The fact that dictator likes you is because you are doing something good for him. Otherwise, why would he even like you? And also, why do you want to be liked by even dictator? Like, I know, like we all want to be liked. That's okay. So, like. It's part of human nature, I guess. But the thing is, like, why are you trying to be liked by even this the most monstrous dictator in human human history? It's a badge of honor that, like, I'm gonna wear for the rest of my life that I am despised by dictator that he wants to kill me. That is like my badge of honor. And it's okay, Trump. Like, if Kim Jong Un doesn't like you, just take it. Don't take it personally. Come on, like. This is just unbelievable. In some ways, I think like Trump is some like, oh, just poor child inside him. Somewhere he just wants to be loved by everyone, and oh, this poor thing. He wouldn't do it. Okay, I gotta give him a chance to respond to that before he we move do on. It. And no, that's I... okay. You know what, North Korea? We're not in a war. We have a good relationship. You know, people don't understand. Having a good relationship Trump, with leaders of other countries is a, a good country. thing. We have a lot of questions to get yes. to. Not that is unbelievable. Having a rela good relationship with dictator means you are helping them to maintain the dictatorship. You don't want to have a good relationship with the Chinese Communist Party right now. You do not have a good relationship with the North Korea's Communist Party either. That's period. You don't want to be friends with the dictator. Like, why would you want to be friends with the dictator? Yeah, be good with other democratic countries makes sense. That's good thing that we should all be peaceful. We should all have diplomacy over anything. Like, we should never use any military options if we can. But I just cannot believe that just Trump is keep insisting that he has a good relationship with Kim Jong Un. That's not a talking point. So you should be embarrassed that the Kim Jong Un thinks like you are a good friend to him. Like you should be so embarrassed by that. Like, what, like your goal as a president of America that makes Kim Jong Un so upset that like he he cannot take you anymore. It's like to conclude like today's reaction video guys, it is I'm not trying to influence you who to vote because it's not my position to do it. I don't know enough about the US current situation to even decide on my own and unfortunately I can't even vote. I'm gonna be a citizen in a few months. And what I really hope to see is that when we pick the leader a lot of times, sometimes when I see here, like we try to pick a nice person, but nice person is not always the person who's gonna do the right thing. And that's why I'm not obsessed with like who presents themselves more graciously or who says things more like changing, you know, warms my heart. I just will not really know about like facts and how they're gonna actually solve real problems that has a lot of complication involved in it. And therefore, I mean, there's of course, there's no way I can know fully from listening to Trump or Biden, their full agenda, their full approach to solve this problem. Of course, they have to simplify things for us. There are some things that we cannot know as a general public, unfortunately. So I don't have all the pieces in my hands, but the approach is that moving forward, my advice to Trump is that, like, own your mistake. You made a mistake, just 
going to North Korea without much preparation. You did not receive any concession from Kim Jong Un, and instead you gave a, a legitimacy back. So yeah, Kim Jong Un won in that in that battle with you. But it's okay. You learned your lesson, and moving forward for the next four years, if you get reelected, do it better. You know the nature of dictatorship. They are not here to please you or please Northern people. They are gonna only here to please themselves. The thing that I wanna see from Trump on North Korean side. With Biden, it's a bit more complicated. If we get reelected, I will support him because that's what American people chose. That's, I mean, I respect democracy, and that's how. If that was a fair election and transparent election, whoever gets win, I will support them because it's our president. And with Biden, I have a more reluctancy because he had eight years to prove, you know, that he care about. Actually, solving North Korea problem, and he didn't show any sign. But that does not mean that I'm not gonna give him a benefit of doubt. I'm sure also Biden learned something from his eight years in his office working with Obama, and until like last four years. And I'm sure he's also keep evolving like all of us. You know, everyone can change, and we can all get better. It's a very divisive time in America, and I just really sincerely hope that I'm not here to try to attack your political ideology or telling you a wrong. I mean, it just as soon as I say something about Trump, I know so many people thinking like you're wrong, you're wrong, you're completely wrong. Trump is a good guy, blah blah. I never said he's a bad person, and also about Biden, the same thing. As soon as I say something about like Democratic Party, Obama, like Biden, they say like. What about you know, Trump? And they get so offended and hurt. And it's, it's just don't be like they are human beings like us. Let's accept that they make mistakes, and let's accept that we also make mistakes, and we can change our minds as they can. So let them change their mind if they want. We don't have to keep telling them like, oh, you because you thought this way 20 years ago, you gotta think the same way now. Anyway, I really hope this was helpful video for you to understand. My take on their opinions of a North Korean issue, and let me know if you wanna see any more reaction videos. This was my first one, so it took really longer than I expected. I hope I I'm gonna get it better at this, and I'm so grateful for your support as always, everyone. I love you so much, and see you next time.